Okay. Wait. Hold on just one second. <laughs> Takes a little bit for it to load. All right, you guys have fun. All right, everybody. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I think we're around week 46, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, didn't get much of a sketch down. In fact, I got it down really poorly. So you get to watch me make mistakes and hopefully fix them, get myself into a hole and paint myself out of it, which is kind of where I'm at right now. So this basically is a wonderful blue heron that uh, I ran into at up at Lake Lagunitas. Uh, didn't paint him there. Um, and he's a little, a little too much on the left hand side. I'm just going to rearrange some things and I'm not going to do any more drawing. Um, it's just going to take too much time. So I'm going to paint around leaving basically the silhouette. One of the things that I want to take note of is the color and the color. I'm going to make this a little bit more of a violet color and this a little bit more of a blue green color, uh, mainly because I see it slightly that way. Uh, maybe change the values ever so slightly. But um, first thing I'm going to do is start with that background. And I'm mixing pretty much a blue, kind of a white and a violet. Kind of want to come close to the value, which I think is about here. I'm not too far off. Maybe a little light, just a little. So let's try that a little bit darker. OK, let's get moving. So we're going to paint this guy in with a lot of turp. Terp meaning Gamsol. Uh, painting on a piece of, of uh, hardboard that I toned with a combination of sap green and acrylic uh, and uh, Ozer and Crimson and White. Leaned a little bit more to the warm side than probably the cool side. So what you can see is I'm kind of rearranging my shape based on the background that I'm laying in. That's not a, that's a good way to work, by the way. Uh, it's, it's, it's easier to evaluate shape than it is line. So very often I'll get a, I generally in a real heavy duty finished studio type painting, I will spend a little bit more time getting a, a much better drawing down. But I find uh, even when I do that, I often end up changing as I get into the painting. So it's kind of what I'm doing here. Uh, just something, I just wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, I was thinking of a figure, I was thinking of some architecture and ran across this wonderful shot of this heron and decided what the heck, let's do that. Uh, happened to be uh, very fortunate last week to be in beautiful Santa Barbara with a, a really wonderful group. Uh, it was really kind of really nice for a workshop because truthfully, nobody was weak everybody was was pretty darn good and it was like it was just wonderful to be able to deal with that and not have to you know start with super basics so it was really uh very very enjoyable did a lot of painting had some wonderful weather anybody out there on the west coast I, east coast i'm sorry uh i i'm not sorry uh, i just make you feel a little bad here because it was probably in the 80s, I think every day in Santa Barbara, which is just, you know, a jewel anyway, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, maybe pick, I threw a little green into it just for fun. Just because I, I hate, as I, you probably heard me say, I hate to constantly paint the same color. I'll go back and do some changing anyway. So we're gonna forget about where the legs are right now because they're so thin, it's a ridiculous to kind of keep them in there. Changing, obviously, a little bit. I want to get that body and the neck about right. It's, it looks pretty, I'm pretty close, but as I paint the positive of the, uh, the bird himself, I will do some changing. When you hear me rubbing, that means I'm laying that paint down in kind of a scumble fashion. 
it's not thick, in other words. Uh, I think what I'm going to try and do uh, next week, probably, is do something with really thick paint for a change. And uh, I just, I don't know why I've got this huge desire to kind of really pick up gobs of paint. So probably won't do it on this one. I may in certain spots when you get down to the rock and stuff. Ah, it's a little bit of a green, throw a little bit of burnt sienna into it to brown it up a little bit so it doesn't stay terribly green. But that's pretty good. There's a little bit back behind the bird. Green and the asphaltum together. The sap, the asphaltum, a little bit of that white or blue mixed in works well. Just kind of, so it's, it's basically a neutral. And most paintings, this one is a little bit, more unusual because there's a lot of cool color. Uh, cool meaning cold, not cool meaning wow. Uh, most paintings literally fall into the neutral area. Most paintings are built out of neutrals and then there's a dominance every now and then of a bright color. You know, the exception is when you get a bright yellow or bright red background that might uh, change it a little bit. But generally that's what I find is that most paintings fall into that neutral zone and you're painting with a variation of grays. In fact, uh, a lot of people rave about uh, the color, beautiful color that Joaquin Soroya used to get. And if you really study his paintings, the good majority of it is in, done in kind of gray colors. And it's, it's that wonderful accent of beautiful color that people really respond or are responding to. So. Let's get a little bit more of this in and then keep moving. Once again, the whole idea is to keep moving. Don't, don't dwell. And, that, and that, that really goes whether you're doing a long painting or short painting. You know, obviously in the shorter paintings, you have to keep moving because uh, time is of the essence. But in the longer paintings, you, know, you, you lay it in fast and then you, you get more time to evaluate. It's not more time necessarily to paint that makes the painting really strong. It's more evaluation time. I just, I, I really cannot stress that enough. Even on location, it's so, it's so beneficial for you to just step back, take a look, evaluate it, see if you're on the right track. If you're not, make your corrections and then continue. So I added a little blue and brown together, a little blue meaning ultramarine and a little brown and we'll just kind of smack some tones. We want variations in these tones. I don't want them to be one dimensional, so to speak. It's a little grayer up in here. You add some darker over in here, a little bit of that blue and brown. So we get a little darker areas. So probably a little warm there. I didn't need it quite that warm. So I just throw a little more ultramarine in it right now. And okay. Let's leave that alone and move on. We've kind of, I already kind of have that rock in there, truthfully. It's a little darker uh, right in here. So I can add a little bit of, with the color I already have in the brush, I'm just adding a little bit of ultramarine into it. Uh, um, but it is the same color that I already have in the brush. And we'll kind of get this rocks. Rocks you can be really free and organic with. You know that you can just kind of take that brush and bounce it around and mess around and be wrong because rocks, are, uh, rocks aren't like architecture. There's not a exactness to them. So rocks can take on any form, any shape, almost any color. Uh, so we'll start with that. Then let's get, let's block this big blue area in down in here. It's darker. So evaluation, this is cooler. This gets a little warmer, but generally the overall shape is darker than this. So that's an assessment you have to make. Once you've made it, you mix your color. If that, that's not far off, maybe a little bit warm, so throw a little more blue into it. Okay, uh, it's a little dry. I don't like the, I'm having to work too hard to get it down. So just by adding a little bit of medium, in this case, in the beginning when I add medium, I will generally use more of the Gamsol or the Turp. Uh, towards the end, I will use more of the um, linseed oil or uh, safflower oil. So 
a little bit so I a lot more look at that look at as soon as I put that uh, as soon as I put that gamsol in there look how much more efficient my brush uses the, the paint and I don't have to work anywhere near as hard now if I'm using thicker paint I'm probably gonna have to add more medium to do this because you the thicker paint your paint is you don't have as much of play with it so kind of get this in there and then there's reflections down here just kind of I'm mapping them in so to speak a little bit darker a little bit darker than the rock you can see it maybe a touch warmer which just means a little bit more brown a little bit more blue that's the brown is the warmer the blue just neutralizes the warm or you could say the brown neutralizes the blue the cool. So it depends upon whether you see that as a warm or a cool. I see it as a warm, this, this little bit of reflection. And I also see some of this warm working its way into the rock here, right here, there, a little bit in here, but I want to kind of smudge it in. I don't want it to be quite as dark. So I want to use some of the color that gets really blue down here. I can, I see some fun colors, guys. I see some really stuff I can have some fun with if I can get if I can get it that far. Hopefully I will. I'm gonna give it a heck of a try. Let's put it that way. So I've kind of stubbed this rock up a little bit uh, for compositional purposes. I want to get enough of the reflection in, and so this rock could be shorter, it could be flatter. Uh, and I'm just making it that way. Not unusual. Change things to suit your composition. Change the things that can be changed. Uh, I was talking to my group, uh, and you can't change architecture too much in terms of perspective. Perspective is something you really can't, you gotta be accurate with, but you can change. You can add a window, take away a window, Make a make a the side of a building longer, make a roof line higher. So there are things that you can do, but you know, our um, what do you call it? Uh, perspective is not one of them. You, you perspective is one of those things that's kind of you've got to be pretty accurate with perspective. You can't uh, change it. Do you use uh, question? Do you use uh, Gamsol and Terp on the same painting, and why one and not the other? I use the word Terp. I don't even own Terp. I use Gamsol. So it's it's when you hear me say Terp, I mean Gamsol. I don't own Terp. Uh, Gamsol is my my medium, basically my thinner, so to speak. So hopefully that answers the question. I'm sorry that I I gave the assumption that I was using both because I I don't. I really strictly use Gamsol. Uh, let me explain why. So I'd rather just tell you I use Gamsol. Several years ago, I found out, uh, I was, I'm always kind of looking at mediums and what they do and toxicity. So I, I don't use terp, not because I don't like terp. It's because of the toxicity. Gamsol is the least toxic of all the solvents. You know, even the odorless Gamsol has proven to be the least toxic. Um, from what I have found out through reading, talking to chemists and talking to other artists. Uh, and you say, Who's what chemist have you talked to? I've had chemists come uh, to school and talk a little bit about mediums and things of that nature. So my reason for using it has is 100% um, about the toxicity, not about the effectiveness. They're both effective, both very effective. I, and I really don't feel, by the way, in case you're wondering, I don't feel a difference when I use uh, Gamsol. It's, to me, it's Terp. So that's why I very, you know, I grew up with Terp, that, that gross smelling stuff that, and then they came out with the odorless and I thought that was a godsend. And uh, eventually worked my way down to Gamsol. Uh, let's kind of work with this area a little bit in here. I don't like where I have it, so I'm gonna move it to about here. And then there's greenery, but there's some darks back in the greenery. So if you notice what I'm doing is I'm working with my darks 
and mid tones, middle darks right now. So what am I going to do down at the bottom? Well, we're going to bring this reflection, probably something like this. Okay. And what color do I see? Well, I see a lot of ochre, a lot of ochre. So I'm going to take my brush, clean it a little bit, take a lot of ochre. I'm going to look at ochre all by itself. Um, yeah, I'm going to use almost pure ochre right here. Just in this area. It's a little dark reflection from up in here. I like that. I think I will get that. I didn't get it in before. I will put it in. Right now, we just kind of push color into color a little bit. Ochre about to here. Similar ochre. I'm going to put a little maples to that ochre. I actually put a little too much ankles to the ochre. Maybe I'll touch a blue because I don't want it quite as brilliant. A little bit of blue. No, way too light. Way too light. More ochre. I really, and more blue. More ochre, more blue. Let's try that. That's better. So we're going to, again, I want those kind of cool edges that kind of are erratic up in here. And look. I'm mixing colors. Not a, I'm not doing it on purpose, but I like it. A little, little uh, runaway paint there, which is okay. Got to start with some color. That's a profound statement, in case you guys are wondering. Every time I mix a color, I don't care. In fact, I kind of like it to be a little off from the color that I mixed before, because that's how I see this. I don't see this as a color. I see it as variations with, that are kind of based on kind of a pale washed out ochre. And so, and as it moves to the right, it gets a little darker. In here, and all I did is I took that ochre that I had on my brush, I added some blue and brown to it. Brown being number or asphaltum in this case. Go back to the plain old ochre. That's just plain old paint. Nothing much, nothing but. Throw a little, mix a little blue into it. So it, it cools off. Maybe a little bit of, I threw some burnt sienna in for the hell of it. Let's just see what happens. I'm just toying with colors right now to see what I can get by with. Not radically dark colors, just some, what we're doing is we're, we're looking through that reflection and we're seeing rocks, but down here, really dark, huh? Really dark. So let's go back to my asphaltum. Same brush, so I, I haven't cleaned the brush. I just keep intermixing colors at this point because I'm not trying for a bright, beautiful, pure color. What I'm trying to do is kind of come similar to that kind of a color right there, which is, is kind of a dark, warm, and I want those edges not to be that hard edge because it's not. Down, let's get that nice dark. So we're kind of showing off the reflection a little bit. We get some darks peeking out from behind. Again, I mentioned this before, but I'll do it now. Uh, we get this kind of passage. It's got a little bit more blue in it than I have. A little passage of kind of dark, erratic reflection down in here. Up in here, I can see a little bit more reflection. So chew that up a little bit. Now, take the same kind of color I've got on the brush. I see some, some darks kind of sneaking back into this color. So we kind of intermixing the paint. So I'm putting it down into wet paint and I'm not laying it neatly on the paint. I'm allowing it to mix into the color. It's giving me some nice variations. So I end, don't end up with one clean, flat color. If I put it in and it feels too dark, I just push it back into the paint that's already there. So you utilize the paint you've already put down. 
Christopher wants to know what asphaltum um, and what white do you use? In this case today, I'm using a uh, titanium white. Sometimes I use a radiant white. Uh, asphaltum, I, I just, the only one I use truthfully is uh, from Gamblin. Um, I, so I've used them in other, I, I couldn't even tell you what brand because I don't remember. Um, and they've been kind of green. Asphaltum in the Gamblin, it has kind of a warm, actually has a very warm cast to it. So if you if you take asphaltum pure and you hit it with um, with white, it's going to go really warm, warmer than a than a um, a burnt umber will. Do you Not, use asphaltum as your gray? As my gray, I use asphalt, a combination of asphaltum and ultramarine blue. Those two colors. Asphaltum is the warm, blue is the cool. So by using the two together, uh, you're actually coming up with a neutral, a near black. Uh, and then depending on how much white you add to it, you get your grays. There's the, there's the near black right there. So we want to get as much of this laid in so we can worry about making it look good, you know? So you're, you're getting as much as you can into this at this point uh, so that you can start what I would call uh, a bit of modeling and ending with, so if you, if you if I, if I were to verbally break this down into stages, I would say stage one, lay in. That's what we're doing right now. Lay in means you get basically everything into the picture, all right? Stage two. Uh, modeling, bringing form, bringing life, along with modeling is color nuance, color variation. The final stage is refinement. So if I'm going to break it down into three basic stages verbally for, for everybody, I, those are the three stages I'm going to use. Now I took, I, I laid out some um, unbleached titanium today because I, I could see like in here, I don't want to go to white, which is quite a ways from white, uh, but it'll look white when I put it, put it down right now. Could use that this week. Huh? Could have used that this week. Sound yes, I did. I used the uh, uh, unbleached titanium this week, sometimes in place of, um, it is a grade, ver it's the exact same value as Naples yellow white, but is as much, it's a grayer version. Uh, I, I've used it many times when I painted sand, uh, but it works for a lot of things. It's, it's kind of a nice, okay. It's feeling pretty good. You notice I said, it's never really good at this stage. I mean, if it's really good at this stage, you know what, you start doing these because I, I can't make it look really good at this stage. Uh, I can do pretty good and that's, what I expect of myself. The really good happens, hopefully, as you approach completion. So now let's get this in, this in, and then let's start dealing with the star of the whole show here. We have a question from Lindy. Um, Hi, Lindy, do you ever use a gray tube of paint? And if so, which ones and when? Portland gray. And then Dolomites? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I use Portland gray sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I use the Gambling Cool and Warm gray. You know, I almost, I should, really, really emphasized, almost never use it. Now, is it, some artists uh, I know live by it. I know Scott Christensen loves it. And for him, it works. Uh, it really depends upon what works for you. I, because, but if one of the things that I, I said early on is that if you tend to notice that almost all painting is a form of your gray tones. It's not bright tones. It's not bright reds. They're all kind of somewhat muted. So the gray helps with that. And there are artists that use that. I don't, but there are artists that use that gray. Um, I usually recommend try something. If you like it, stay with it. You know, <laughs> if you don't like it, don't do it again. And so that's how I found things that I feel the most comfortable with using is trial and error. All right, I'm gonna take that same color. What that is, by the way, is I mixed um, into this kind of mucky color. I mixed a little bit of uh, 
the uh, unbleached titanium in there. And I can see it right on this rock back here. There's a rock back behind this guy, right? Let's put it in there. Let's put the, oh, there's one right here too. A little bit in front of him and then back behind him. And this is where you kind of let your paint just push itself into the, into the other paint. Okay. A little bit maybe warmer. I'm going to throw a little touch of ochre into that color and see what I can get out of it. That's too, way too bright. Way too bright. So we kind of push it back into the color that's there. There we go. Um, um, what were the grays that you mentioned? Portland gray. That was Portland gray. Okay. Portland gray. Uh, warm gray and cool gray by Gamblin. Both, if you're going to get them, get them both. I have both. I, I, I don't think, God, I can't remember the last time I've used them. Every now and then I just kind of try something different and I'll lay them out, but generally I don't use them. You know, I, I'll try things. So explore, I'll explore new colors, I'll explore new surfaces, um, things of that nature. So there's those rocks back behind. Looks like there's a little, I haven't pushed, the greenery starts to get what I, brighter color. And I'm kind of avoiding brighter color right now, if you haven't noticed. Uh, let's get a little bit of this rock surface in up. We're gonna break it down into about three values. Kind of a, a kind of a light warm, very almost near warm white, and a few little divots of kind of soft cool. So those are that's my terminology. You like it? Hopefully. Let's start with the. Uh, uh, that's good color. So I'm standing back for a second. Yeah, it looks okay. A little bit more of the unbleached titanium. We're just gonna kind of dry brush some of this stuff in. Light touches on this brush. Now, I wanna get this little piece right in here, right, that little piece, right? And it feels like it should be about there. So if you put it, in, you know, if I'm in the wrong spot, it doesn't really matter. Because the only reason you would know I'm in the wrong spot is you can see my reference, right? When I'm done, if it looks okay, you're not going to know why I messed up. Unless I tell you. Every time you see me put my brush down, I'm intermixing some other subtle colors in there. Uh, maybe ochre, maybe brown, maybe blue. Just And I do that as I see it. If I see it lean a little one way or the other, then I ch change it up. You know, it, you kind of just have to trust your gut in this and not go too strong one way or the other. And like, but what I'm going to do at this point is keep everything not in the bright uh, stage of the painting, not in that bright color. Everything now is staying a little bit more muted because I, the bright color is where the sunlight strikes the, the most direct. <laughs> So just so you know, I just picked up little Naples yellow and a little blue together. Just, I felt like I I could cool it off as, you know, I don't like that as much. I'm gonna add a little bit of a, of a um, what is that? Bird sienna. Just kind of give it a little bit better, more of a interesting flavor there down in here. Now we get little tickles of light down in here. Just little, the light's just kind of sneaking. You gotta talk like that too. <laughs> Where the light just kind of sneaks down in there. <laughs> it helps when you talk like that because then you then you use your brush that way. Or if you're going to put a bold stroke down, you go, so now I'm going to put a bold stroke. You know, you just kind of change your tonality and um, it uh, does, works for me. I mean, not for you guys, but you gotta have some sort of fun when you paint. Make fun of yourself, if nothing else. So what I did is the same color I was using, I just threw a little bit of burnt sienna into that color. Just, I felt, I felt like I was a little on the cold side and I needed a few warms. Now I notice really interesting as come right down in here, it starts to get quite warm. So I picked a little of the cat orange up and we're gonna sneak it. First place I'm gonna sneak it is right about here. And I do like that. 
it's and the cat orange is just mixed in with the other colors. So it's not like I'm using cat orange all by itself. I'm just I'm continually mixing out of a pot of color. And I've got a dark pot and a light pot right now. So you can see the warmth. So I, I can scuff a little of that in here. It just kind of feels like it could stand a little bit of warm. So it take it sure takes it out of that monotonous one tone rock look, you know. Um, rocks generally uh, are rock really kind of fun because you can play, you can really be wrong on your color. And sometimes you can really push your color. Just keep your values correct, always. Keep your values correct. I could say that over and over again. I can't, I don't think I can say it enough. It's all about value. You can have fun with color. You will learn more. The more you play, you will learn more with color. We can we can go through color theory. Um, we've got a very wonderful artist who's a good friend of mine who uh, doesn't. He, his whole philosophy is if you use too much color theory and you overthink it, your painting becomes too scientific, and there's no artistic kind of freedom. Uh, but Knowing color theory is like crucial. Understanding and understand, and then it's it's the way I learned perspective was uh, learn perspective, learn all the plotting, the geometry, everything of perspective. Then, as you start painting, don't think about it because hopefully enough of it comes through. You're you're automatically going to think that way. All right. And there's a truth to it. That's truthfully when I really began to develop this concept of what quick studies, my quick studies courses are usually about, is based on that theory, is literally based on the theory. Most people are better than they know they are. They just overthink themselves. And you overthink yourselves into uh, overworking. You, just, you don't use trust. So I'm a big you know, conviction, conviction and trust, very much one and the same. Looking at this. So, just picked up a little bit of warm in, into that same color I was just using. And what that is, we just carved that part of the rock. Uh, Zach wants to know what are the big brushes you're using and what I'm just using are. this gesso brush right now. That's it. And uh, what medium are you using to get the paint to flow? Strictly, I am using, I have not changed, only used Gamsol so far. No silver? Not yet. Silver. Not until we move into painting on top of paint. When I start, now I added white and Naples yellow. So this is a bright, by the way, you guys, this is a bright color. This may be close to white. And we're going to go right on the top of that rock there. And we're going to kind of work fades down, just barely, barely see it. So I'm just, just letting that the tip of that brush do 90% of the work. All right, to me, it's too yellow. I added more white. Now look, that, that color looked light. But when I put this color next to it, it's nowhere near as light. Ah, knocked out too much of that. Let's put it back in there. Edges, soft edges. Okay, keep moving on here. Keep keeping those whites going. Now, I'm going to take close to a pure white, but I still got the Naples in it. So it's not as bright as I may make it sound. We're gonna come up here and hit kind of, and I'm using kind of a dry brush stroke, meaning I'm not pressing. And so it's not hitting, it's not laying down real thick and gooey. It's just kind of hitting and missing. What that is allowing me to do is create texture without having to work at creating texture. The brush is doing the texture work for me. And 
I, I want to get enough of this in so that I can move on to my guy. And then we have to add some more stuff back in here. Make it all kind of come together. Where are we at here? A little over 30 minutes into it. And I haven't touched the bird. Set the stage, then bring in the star. I forget who told me that. One of my teachers said that early on. Set the stage, bring in the star. So what am I doing? Setting the stage. I painted too much light in there. Now I just stood back. It's actually feeling like a rock. Isn't that a Paul Simon song? Uh, I don't care if I have every little divot in there. I just want it to feel correct. You know, can, I can always go back in and add in some of that stuff, providing I have the time in, the, in this. If you always have the time in a studio painting. You can go back to it the following Thursday and put it in for that matter. You don't have to, you don't have to do everything at that moment. Get away from it. So when I'm working on a show, uh, I have about four paintings going at the same time. And I'll get one painting to a certain point, and if I'm relatively satisfied, or if I'm not satisfied for that matter, uh, what I will do is set it aside where I can see it generally. I put it kind of off to the side, uh, on, on, hang it on a wall, and uh, start on another piece. And I, I get a chance to look back at it every now and then, uh, but I'm not hung up on the piece, you know? I think that's important because boy, when I was first learning, um, man, I could get hung up in areas and just drive myself insane. It isn't working. Oh, I got to fix it. It isn't working. I got to fix it. It isn't working. I never fixed it. Whenever I approached paintings out, I never fixed it, truthfully. You know, it, I may have got it to the point uh, where it looked okay, but I never really fixed it the way. But what I have found is I really don't need to do as much as I thought I had to do if I leave it alone. And then I come back and say, Oh, I only need to do this and this. And so you don't, because you, you, your mind has gotten away from the fact of it being a problem. And I think that's super beneficial. Because we all, and I'm speaking, for, I'm speaking for all of you. Uh, when I say we, I mean you, me, and everyone. We all generally see the problems in our paintings and are working to continually correct them. Uh, and that can be uh, just a, a, a futile battle uh, that can really drive you a little bit crazy. Um, I only say it because I've lived it. Okay, I don't want to go too much further simply because I think it's time to get into, well, let's get a little bit of this going then let's get into that bird. All right, a uh, little bit of the greenery, darker greenery and shadow, lighter greenery and light, darker greenery and shadow. So what are we going to do first? Everybody together. What are we going to do first? I know you're all saying the greenery and shadow. Thank you. Okay. So we're doing the greenery and shadow, which is, I'm not going to put a lot of ochre into it. I'm going to keep it more on the cool side. I still want it looking green. So let's take a, see this right in here? Let's take a gander. Oh, good word. Take a gander at that green. There we go. And it just kind of scuffs in there and hits and misses. I can throw some darks back into it if I need to. Then it comes down where it's almost going into the light. Same color. Where, where else do I see it? Well, a little bit sneaks up here. Just let that brush just barely touch. Otherwise, you're gonna, it's going to be heavy handed and you're going to be sorry. Behind that, up in here, kind of hits and misses right before that. None down in here, but a lot in here. And I don't know if it's moss. It almost looks like it could be moss in here, right in this particular part. Yeah, I think it is the way it's, the way it's kind of, the, the, it looks like there's some leaves also, but generally I see a lot of, a lot of little 
we can have a lot of fun right at the end if I get if I have the time, man, I can go in there and have a lot of just a field day. Uh, these are some of the little leaves. So just put little tiny strokes out. Oh, just, just touch lighter, just throw a little bit of a maples yellow light into it. Get it up here, a little bit back in here, maybe a little scuff here and there. And now let's get it as an underpainting down here before I bring my lights in. Okay, now let's bring some lights in. So clean the brush and Naples, sap green, and it goes real light green. And warm it up, ochre. Ochre gives it sunlight. See, pretty, I came pretty close on the first try. I like that. That's usually all you're ever gonna get. You're pretty close on it. If you get pretty close the first try, go out and celebrate. Lift up and you can give the feeling of blades of grass. You don't have to paint them one by one. A lot of people that you can individualize some towards the end if you wish, if you feel you need it. But generally, if you individualize too many of them, you call so much attention to it that um, it starts to detract from the rest of it. Now I put a little bit more Naples yellow in that same color. We're gonna put a little bit of a lighter area because I can see it get a little light. I'm gonna bring a little ochre into that too. And then I just noticed some light on that rock. So I went back to my kind of rock color there. And basically when I set rock color, pretty much what I did is I grabbed the uh, unbleached titanium and white. I think I missed a few questions back here. Sorry about that. Um, Bill Cook wants to know when you clean your brush, uh, just an empty rag, turf? Yeah. Or turf. See, this, see my rag? Yikes. <laughs> so what I do at this point, usually turn the damp rag inside out. And start using this side of it, or I get a new one. <laughs> uh, one of the three. These are actually good questions because they're things that generally um, I just assume everybody realizes. And the fact that someone's asking at me means probably three or four people aren't maybe thinking the same thing. So thanks for asking that. Now you see how empty this is. We'll, we'll do something and make that look better, I hope, later. But let's get that bird going because that's starting to drive me crazy. So I'm going to grab, <clears throat> let me get my little ice tea. I know there was another question I can but somehow I can't. I'm going to get rid of this rag, by the way, just so you know, and go to my other. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I mean, these shop towels are great, by the way, you guys. Um, I like them better than anything. But a lot of times, like when we're in Europe, we usually grab uh, just hordes of paper towels. Paper towels tend to not uh, last as long. Shop towels tend to be a lot more forgiving, and you can do a lot more with it. So let's figure this guy out, OK? Let's kind of. So I, I'm not real cr crazy about that right in there. What brush are you using? This is a number eight rosemary uh, filbert. And it's an eight and it's an ivory, in case you're wondering. My love affair with rosemary brushes. Just kind of redrawing this guy because I felt, he felt wrong. But I want to come pretty close to that color. But I'm going to make it more of a, of a green this time. Um, and I'm going to use, I have a light blue and a sap green together. That's probably going to be a little too dark, but I'm going to try it anyway, just with those two colors. Yeah, let's leave it. Let's start with that. It's not going to end up there. It goes a little more, a little darker, a little bit more violet towards the tail. So I mixed up a little bit of a darker, quite a bit of a darker color now that I look at it. Oh, that's pretty good. So we're going to go here. You want your proportion to be pretty accurate because you are depicting anatomical, something anatomical. And you want that to be correct. 
you know, I don't want somebody who knows birds right and left to come in and look at it and go, oh, that's not, that's wrong. And I know uh, people that paint horses are sticklers. Notice I haven't done a horse. Why haven't I done a horse? I don't do a lot of horses. I prefer cows. Not as animals, but as painting subject matter. Horses I ride, cows I paint. Although when I was a kid, when I was a kid, my aunt and uncle owned a ranch. And my uncle, I must have been seven, eight years old, maybe, maybe between eight and 12, somewhere in that ring. I used to go and I spent six weeks in the summer, their ranch in Nevada. And my um, uncle said, I want you to go out, he had a bunch of, of calves. So I want you to go out and see if you can catch a calf, see if you can ride it. So I'd run out there. Pretty, I was pretty good at catching them, okay? Not very good at riding them, but I was pretty good at catching them. They're big, by the way. Calves, I'm not, calves aren't tiny animals. Not, I wasn't a tiny, I mean, I wasn't a big guy either. So it was, a, it was a kick. Now I look at it and I'm going, geez, was I cool? Was that cool? But it was fun. It was fun to go to, go to a, a ranch and I remember chasing turkeys. He had turkeys at one point. Um, I remember horseback riding one time with my uncle and I got thrown into a um, big bush of poison oak, which is kind of fun, huh? And then, you know, and then I spent a couple of weeks in bed nursing my poison oak. Um, I have no idea why I'm telling you all this. I'm just checking, drawing a lot of what I'm doing as I am painting, as you see me, like I see blue, and I'm doing subtle variations, a little bit more blue, like there's a little, there's a divot where the wing goes. I had it in the wrong spot. A little bit more of a pull here. I'm gonna take this background color and cut in. I can actually just pick it right here and cut it now. Now you can see I darkened his neck quite a bit. Now the tail, because of this darkening the background, the tail does stand out pretty bit. So I'm gonna try ultramarine and white and see what happens. Uh, just those two, but I already have dirt in my brush. So when I say ultramarine and white, the ultramarine and white plus whatever else I got in there. And it gets darker and warmer. I'm gonna try, um, I think I went a little too warm, but I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. Uh, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. Yeah, I'm a little too warm. Value looks pretty good. I'm a little too on the, on the warm side. It would work, but I, I'm cooling it down just a little bit with a little more blue. That's all. <clears throat> Marcia said, um, or Heidi says, to not forget the peacock, gorgeous George. That's true. Where was that? That's it's true. That, that comment came from my uh, much younger sister. I'm saying that because it will make her feel good. Um, <laughs> yeah, my aunt and uncle also had uh, peacocks. And it was this one peacock that just, and peacocks generally just stroll the grounds. And this one peacock was, they, they named all their animals. I mean, you know, one of their chickens was named Shorty. And I mean, um, Gorgeous George was their peacock. And it was named, I think there was a wrestler, Gorgeous George. I think that's where they got the name at the time. And he strolled, strolled the grounds like he owned it. He probably did. So a few of those dark marks really help. The lights are what's gonna make this guy, by the way, in case you're wondering. He looks like he's getting lost. The lights are what makes it. So. That will happen, but I, you don't want to get in there too soon. You got to, if I put the lights, finish it off. So I've got, I want to get enough of the other colors in there. Like here, I'm going to warm him up because he's getting some reflected light on his belly. That's too, too light. Let's try it again. There, that's probably too, too warm, but I don't mind that. 
Yeah, that's nice. I'm gonna invent a new species of bird here. Okay, a little bit more activity, feathers. Yeah, I don't like the color. Color felt too warm, more blue. Christopher said uh, he'd like to see you do a whole thing on rocks underwater. Rocks under, well, rocks underwater are just a little more colorful. Sure, I never, I'm so, so at, but oh, next time I'm see. underwater with my camera. Uh, no, just ro <laughs> rocks underwater. Okay, uh, no, I can, I can do some faking stuff. I think Christopher uh, had a question earlier. That having I been an illustrator, by the way, <laughs> there's things that you had to do that you couldn't get exact reference on, like rocks underwater. I remember I had to do a, a movie poster of a monster in a, some sort of bizarre spaceship underwater with, it didn't come out very good, so I don't really do a lot with it, but it was a, a underwater with rocks and the rocks came out probably better than anything else. And the bubbles, bubbles, bubbles came out pretty good. So I'm putting a little bit of this, partly for drawing's sake. And I, I, this is another, this is a small rosemary. What is this? Let me see if I can find a number on it. Number four, uh, mongoose, synthetic mongoose. So I'm being, as, you, as I'm more accurate, I'll rest my finger, as you might notice. Now you can see how that's popping this guy out. Also, on the back side of him, I'm going to take a little. Um, I took a little bit of blue and added it. And we'll just kind of just tickling in some colors here, just kind of. And I can see it gets it gets kind of warm. So I'm going to try maples with just a little bit of a warm mix in now. For this, I am using a little bit of the medium, by the way, the, uh, a little bit more naples. A little, uh, yeah, the um, safflower oil. Yeah. It could be linseed oil, by the way, in case you, you do not have to use safflower oil. I just, people say, why, why? Well, somebody told me to try it one time. I tried it and I liked it, so that's why I use it. But I've used, when I've worked on other people's pieces or if I'm somewhere where I don't have it, all I get is linseed oil, it works just fine. So, you know, I'm a creature of habit, yet I will try things. Oh, some nice colors going on there. I, this feels like it needs to come down lower. So let's try it. Down here, which means I need to carve the background. So we take whatever this background color is and redraw it. Okay, now his neck could come out further. Uh, these guys change as they walk. I've seen them walk and uh, sometimes they'll straighten their neck and sometimes they'll crunch it up just like this. I don't like painting individual takes away from that. So this is why you spend your time building up the rest of it so that you can really fuss when you get down to this. Like up in here, I think I can fuss quite a bit. Uh, it needs to come up. Background. Background needs to come up in here. And a little bit of the background here, a little bit back behind that leg. Stepping back, the thing I, uh, I, I'm going to tell you what I like and what I don't like. Uh, I still think, what I don't like is I still think I need more contrast. Uh, and some of it is right here. Uh, what I do like is I like the color that I'm getting in this bird better than the color that I see. And it's based on this. So I, I've, in other words, I'm just enhancing pretty much what I see. I'm not really reinventing. And any colors you see me using up in here literally is based upon the colors that I am observing. So let's move up a little bit more into the head. What do you say? And we have a nice dark, which was really going to help. So I'm going to think I'll, I'll pop that dark in there because I think I need that as almost an anchor 
and I have to kind of decide drawing was. So what I'll do, very make sure my finger is clean. I'll rest my little fingernail down. And we'll kind of pop that in there thinking and assuming that it's right. Paint like you know what you're doing and assume you're wrong. Okay, I painted like I knew what I was doing. I still can't tell if I'm right or wrong. I think I'm right. Not sure. A little bit of that background. We're gonna scuff this rock up so it's not this beautiful clean blue kind of eh, just crap like that. Uh, and maybe push a little bit. But let's let's go back to the bird. That's what we're dealing with. Want to want to get him in there? Okay, I was hoping to get him in there in the next five minutes. So, and then I want to move all over the place. Then we want, then I want to move throughout the piece. Once I get him basically, and where he's basically, he looks like he could be almost done, but he's not. This gets a little lighter around the marking. That's a little cooler. Feels pretty good. Uh, on the underside, it looks like it gets a little warmer. Again, I'm still using this number four. Number four, rosemary. And where do we want to go? Rosemary, uh, uh, mongoose. mongoose. God, I'm trying to think and think, talk, and paint at the same time is just a, a major problem. I, that helps define the bird, and there is a dark there. There's also a little bit more dark um, right here, not that dark. I never worry when I do this stuff if I'm too dark. Or too light because I know I, if I already have wet paint down, I know I can just brush that into the paint. Now, without putting lights on him, that really pulled it up. Same with this. And there's more darks back up here, kind of up. Okay. Let's gonna take some of this color. Smudge some. So you notice I'm kind of scuffing that rock up as we go. There's some weird light happening. Oh, it's a rock there. So there's a whole rock shape happens right here, you guys. And I'm just discovering it. There's no way you can see it because I didn't even see it. It's a rock right. Here and that is that's going to help. There's a rock there. That's a reminder, placeholder, whatever you want to call it. Okay, let's continue on, on my uh, bird quest, so to speak. Light blue. Well, I want it warm. I'm sorry. I messed up. I didn't mean I didn't mean to go cold. I meant to go warm. A light warm on the underside right here. Because it's underside, it's getting reflected light. Now, two things happen. There is local color, which influences the color you're painting. And then there is, you know, color of light. Light might be reflected, light might be direct. So there's two, two factors that influence color always. The local color of whatever it is, someone's wearing a red sweater, it's a red. But if it's being affected by a green light, it's not going to be a, a bright red. It's going to be a little bit of a different red. So you've got those two factors always to contend with. Color of light, local color. And that's the, when you get something like this bird and he physically, his local colors change from area to area due to uh, the makeup of you know, the, the feathers that he has. Um, his coloration, so to speak, that you're really dealing with those those two factors constantly. So we're gonna take, uh, let's see if we can get that nice orange beak in there. So it's kind of a red orange. Let's see what this, no, it's not enough. First stroke, I could tell it wasn't brighter. It was too, let's go brighter. 
That's better. It's a duller color, so I want to put a duller color in over that. Right there. Let's start with that. We're going to go lighter and darker. So the first thing I'm going to do is back coming right off the board as I would be. It gets a little darker right here. So we're going to push that in there. And then we're going to push that back to where his eye socket is. This is just drawing because I'm, I'm not a bird anatomy expert, by the way. And I really haven't painted a lot of birds. I really haven't. I've done a few, but um, I've done ducks, things of that nature. My buddy Kathleen Dunphy is a much better bird painter. But, you know, if you're, my feelings if you're a painter, learn how to paint everything. Don't, don't be a one trick pony. Uh, even if you don't, Paint landscapes, paint landscapes. Even if you don't paint figures, paint figures. Even if you paint them bad, practice. It, it sharpens your eye, if nothing else. All right, so now let's get the top and the bottom. Both get more reflection. So on the bottom, we can bring in more golden light and We'll get a nice tip on this brush. So when I take the brush, it's flat, but if I look, if I turn it that way, it's knife edged. See it? So what I will do is use that knife edge, come in, begin to lighten that part of the beak. Now he gets colder right about there. So I've gone with white blue and I'm able to get colder and work it right into that. That feels okay. I'm holding my breath as I'm going because as I said, I don't, hey, this is a, you guys get to watch me bomb or uh, maybe pull off something halfway decent. One of the things about these live painting sessions is I realize that is that you get the good, the bad and the ugly, so to speak. Um, you get them when they work, you get them when they come out okay, and you get them when they kind of suck. And if nothing else, please realize that's the story of painting, all three. Good, bad, and oops, that kind of a thing. Good, bad, and not, you know, like, oh, it's okay. It's good enough. <laughs> I remember as a student turning in many of the assignments that I thought was good enough because time was up and I was able to get it in. Oh, time's up, got it in. Take my lumps, wasn't that great, but learned something. Hopefully everyone else had as much trouble as I did. Okay, let's keep going. It's a little bit of a beautiful little light that flickers through. It's kind of warm, so I can bring a little bit of warmth to that light color right about here on the tail and down there. And then down the back, it's cooler light right about here. From here on down, any sort of light that just happens to hit the feathers here, down in here, it's all cooler light. I'm standing back, get a look. I think I could bring some more darks. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the time. I'm behind where I want to be, in case you guys are wondering. Let's get, I'm going to take, if I can find it, I can find it. Oh, I just set it down here. Uh, when I came back from them, um, I set all my brushes down. I didn't look really carefully where I put them. So I was looking for my fan. I can't find it. So I'm going to use something else. Uh, I'm going to use this big, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take white and Naples and medium. And I'll tell you why I'm using this brush and not a fan. Uh, very simply, because if I do that, I can spread the bristles a little bit, and I can get a little bit of the fan effect. 
See that? That almost worked. Almost. Let's try it again. What do you say? No, too, too strong. And I can fix that. I can fix that in six strokes. A little bit of that beautiful warm color. So I'm using ochre, orange, a little bit of Naples, and it's kind of from feathers. We're letting them come down in here, get a little warmer. Now, where it gets too heavy handed and too thick, you just basically take that background of that rock, and break it up. That worked. So we're done. Okay. We're going to leave it alone for a second. We're going to bring some of this color and bring it down so it blends more gracefully. A little bit in here, a little bit down at the bottom, the wing. Now, let's get that back leg. Where's that back leg? Right there, right there. So we're going to the back leg's going to come right, yeah, right off of this dark shape. And we're going to get the warm in. And on the other leg, not, maybe just a little lighter. And it's going to come from here. Hopefully, I'm going to get these legs in the right spot. I think this is a little flat. I could probably make that a little bit better with a few little uh, adjustments of color so it isn't quite as bright. So we start. I started a little brighter and finished uh, a little darker. There are some cooler tail feathers I'm going to pull off. There, a little bluer. Well, I see a lot of things that I could fuss with on this bird. It's egret. Okay. Um, I, let, we'll get the legs in, not right now. So in case you're wondering, first thing I want to do is I want to do something to this rock because I know I'm not going to have a chance to go back to it. So I want to get a little bit of variation in it. Um, here, and I can take a more of a bluer color. And I think I can come in that, yeah, that's good. A little bit there. I'm moving all over the place. So when you see me move this fast, it's probably why I'm not telling you a whole bunch of stuff. Not, I'm telling you a whole bunch of stuff because I'm really painting based on um, looking at it and feeling what it might need. Like I see it, that was a big flat area and I see a lot of kind of semi-warmish tonality in this area. I don't want to destroy too much of that bird if I can help it. I just messed up a little bit of it, but not a lot. So we'll get a little bit so color variation, warm to cool, warm to cool, but really close value, very, very close. On. The closer the value, the better. You put you, you, you punch a hole in it and it just feels wrong. So let's see, Bob's saying that the feathers are really reading bright and Denise said. That's because you're there. <laughs> There's, I see problems with them. They're okay. Uh, they're not terrible. That's that's the best compliment I can give myself right now. Denise said uh, she likes the depth created in the shadow parts of a big rock. <laughs> so we're going to put a little light on this rock now and get rid of that line. Not a lot, just a little, but it's it's got just, I, and that's where I noticed it, a little bit of ochre and just a touch lighter than the color. So let's try this. You know, that's pretty good. Okay. Diana said the bird colors are beautiful and better than the reference. Well, the, I, uh, thanks for that, Diana, because that's really what I was trying for, I'm enhancing. And back one of these weeks, it's funny that uh, you bring that up. One of these weeks, what I want to do is take uh, and do what I call exaggerated color based on the reference. So you're taking the reference and you're really take just taking that color to an extreme beyond what, what is reality, but still trying to make it work. And a lot of that is just consistency, understanding, having a plan and understanding what you're trying to do. 
So that's that rock. It's a little bit of, there's Murphy. Murphy, cool it. Murphy was unhappy because we were gone all week without him. And uh, came home, picked him up, and I think he slept for 10 hours straight because he played with all these other dogs. So we're dog people, by the way. I don't mean in the way we look, but <laughs> truthfully, um, we have dogs. We've, all, we've had dogs forever. They helped raise our kids. We gotta, gotta make the bird stand on something. So we gotta get those legs in there sometime. And you're probably saying, when's it gonna put the legs in? I don't know. Uh, I'm just trying to get the rest of the piece feeling like it's ready. Cause those are almost the finishing touches. Uh, but they overlap the rock. So I want to, if there's anything I want to do with a rock, for example, they're cast shadow. So the leg is going to come down here and there's a shadow and a little cooler, a little darker, and it's right below that foot. That comes back. Is Murphy coming up? See here? We're in my studio. And um, he has free run. He comes in here every now and then and checks me out, makes sure I'm doing okay. Um, but we have to be in here with him because he's uh, he's only, geez, how old is he? He's uh, just about a year and a half. So he's still kind of a puppy and he likes to pick up things and take them. And so I've been in my studio going, where the hell's that brush? realizing that if I go downstairs and hunt a little bit, Murphy probably took it. And so, having dogs is great though. Um, it's working. I, I can really get a lot more going in this rock and in this rock. I'm gonna get a little bit more going in the reflection. It's a little bit underdone. So I wanna get some more, more of these darks that I see in there. So far I've, I've used a total of four brushes to see those, if you're counting. I am. Uh, my big gesso brush, which, which is my lay-in brush. And sometimes I use a number 12. You can see they're very similar in size. Uh, this is a little clumsier. This meaning the gesso brush is a little clumsier and sometimes is really good to paint foliage uh, and get big kind of clumsy areas laid in. So we're gonna put a little bit of darkness back in here. I'm gonna put some of the some of that ochre with a little orange in the ochre. Whoa, too much orange in the ochre. Does that work? And we'll get a little bit of the I was gonna paint a Santa Barbara scene, but I did two of them last week. Did eight did eight of them while we were so I'm gonna do one eventually going to do because it was some beautiful color one day and I, I shot some photos after we had finished painting and uh, we're sitting down and having a cocktail outside uh, happened to be a place that served and you could have something outside and sit on a bench somewhere and not you know get too close to anybody we didn't get too close to anybody we we're all quite conscious of uh, being careful since we're Speaking for myself, um, I'm old and I don't want to uh, get, get the stupid virus or give it to anybody, which we're trying, trying like crazy now to find a place I can get a vaccine. And, so, hey Murph. Okay, I'm gonna try and get this, um, I'm gonna take a liner little liner here. This is still kind of dull to me. It needs a little bit of work. Um, if I, you know, I'm down to about my last 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm, we'll see what I can get in there. I don't know if, how much I'm going to be able to get in. Make this rock sit behind the other rock. Just darkening a little bit. Okay. Uh, so anyway, I've got this liner. What, what is this? The number two. Liners are watercolor brushes, by the way, you guys. Uh, they're not oil. And I think I've mentioned it before. I, I was 
in New York City at a portrait convention watching a Richard Schmidt painting. And all of a sudden I saw him pick up these little watercolor brushes and started using them. And I went, why the hell haven't I thought of that? Uh, and so I started using them occasionally and they've been really helpful. But I just, when you need them, you can really overuse these things. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the uh, dark of the leg in. So that is at very close to a cool neutral. That's relatively dark. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and come straight, come down to the knee. Knee's gonna be here, okay? So there's the knee. Now the knee's gonna be a little higher. Hi, Murph. I got a dog right at my feet. Okay. And he's, she could teach him to paint. Okay. Usually he'll sleep during our, our demo, so, but today he's, uh, he's awake, which is okay. He's a good dog. Now I want to find, bring that down. A little wider at the ankle, so I just press more. Okay. And then we're going to do it with the other leg. The other leg, really, from the knee, which is here, this knee on down, and it, it isn't, it goes out a little bit, meaning it goes this way just a little bit. And then right at the ankle, right about there. All right. Very procedural, by the way, you very procedural. Now I see a cool on that leg. So I've gone to my blue and a little bit of white. And we're gonna try and see if we can get some of that blue in right here. Nope, not light enough. Get a little bit more white into that. Okay, let's try it again. Coming, uh, there we go. That's a little too light. I just didn't mix it well enough. There, the white came out before the blue. Okay. So there we go, that's about right. Down to where the knee is, the knee's about in here. And then we'll get a little bit of the shadow. All right, same color. Got, I'm gonna wipe in my fingers because each time I'm resting them here, I'm using my arm as a mall stick. Poor man's mall stick. You've got one right there, by the way. Yeah, but back and we start to get a little bit, and then not as much noticeable light. See if any sandy down? No, I don't. It's not a good so I'm going to take the dark again with a little bit of blue in it. And I'm going to bury with my fingernail. I'm going to do where I see the actual feet themselves. One there, one right here, and one. Behind, it looks like there's one over here too. So a little bit, just kind of indicate. Yeah, you know, if you're not sure, put it in gingerly, meaning put it in in a way that if you're a little off, you can change it. This is where people will draw it out and then they'll paint so carefully around their drawing and it gets so stiff. Um, you've got to realize that if you drew it once, you can draw it again. And this is, this comes out beyond that. And a little bit of a, right here. Okay, there's some more white lights I can put in there, which will really help it. Um, by that, I mean the rock color, like right there. We got it there, we got it. Hitting negatives. Okay, let's put the light on the leg because that, that's going to help a lot. It's going to make the bird feel more or less complete. So we're going to put that white with medium and a little bit of Naples. So I never, so what we're going to do is we're going to really with this liner, really. So it's that, but I've thinned it out. You see that? So what I'll do is I'll lay and I'll get it really thin. And now I'll come very carefully. Whoops. Mix too much of the paint into it. Let's try it one more time. Well, this one starts right from here. And 
open the And this knee is a little bit higher. I could still go a lot lighter in there. Man, I could see it. I can really bring that out more. If I have time, I will do it. There we go. And down on the leg. Brr. And here and down with this leg. And then on the feet, a little bit, get a little bit in there on that foot, meaning right. No, it's still not, it's sticking. Let's try it again. Okay, there we go. Punch, 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 and on that, right there. And that's pretty good. That's probably as good as I'm going to get right now. Now, I can bring a couple of, remember I said I didn't want, don't want to over-particularize, but it doesn't hurt to bring a couple in like that. Uh, I want to get a little bit of the foliage down in here. A little bit of the reflection of the bird that all we're seeing is his legs. So that's really not a big deal. It's, it's um, basically what you're doing is you're going to come straight down from here. I don't, I see it right about there. Go down again. There. On the other one. There. So what do I see? I see it kind of go. It wasn't wet enough. I'll leave it alone. I don't have time to, to mess with it much more. Although it does come up a little into the rock. I can see it right in this one particularly. Okay. Um, let's take, oh, I want to take this number eight. See what I can do with it. I'm going to pick up Naples Yellow Light, go back to that, this pale green I was using, because I want to go lighter. I mean, I need to use medium. So it's a very white green, but it is green. It is green. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right about here. If I can, I'm going to look straight up. I'm going to look right here and say, this is where I want it, right in here. My liner because I think I, could, I think I could get a little bit better line. I don't need much, but you need a little bit. And with that same, we're going to go over here. It comes right underneath his foot, so it's going to come over here. So we're going to go. Now I don't. We don't have to be in this these spaces. I just. That's where I like to do it and then chop back in. So I'm going to bring a little bit more Naples into it, a lot more medium because it's not sticking on top very well. So let's try it kind of in here, just kind of a jumble. You guys can't. <laughs> you guys probably can't hear it, but our dog's back here, but 10 feet behind me, laying on the floor, chewing on a bone. See, I'll put it, I'll put this stuff in, and if it doesn't work now, there's a lot of reflection down here. So we get this is reflecting down in here. And we get a little bit of a green reflection. I can see it. 
off to the right. I'm just being an abstract painter right now, you guys, just in case you're wondering. That's pretty much what you have to do when you tackle this stuff. Get it in there and correct it. If it's wrong, correct it. If it's right, leave it. But be bold. Okay, put it in there and then we take some negatives, get a few negatives in there. Okay. And I've got to punch that bird, I can see. I, I, I've got to, he just feels like he needs to be really uh, pronounced even a little bit more than I have him. So I'm basically taking darks now and, me, and kind of mid-tones and going to cut in a little bit on, on these um, leaves. If they're too thick, then I'm out. If they're too blocky and bold, cut into them. And you go back and forth until it feels right. And I'm not going to have a chance to do as much as I normally would. I would probably go back and forth for a while, then go work on other areas. Then go back and forth. And it's kind of a continuation of that. Sink down here. Like I don't see that much reflection up from this right in here. I see a little bit, but not that much. I see a little bit more there. I see a little bit of reflection right about in here from the rock. Okay, I want to pronounce that bird now if I can. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to take clean my brush. I'm going to take uh, some solvent-free gel in a separate spot. Take as much white as I can get because I already have a little bit of residue in this brush and get a nice creamy, I think I may use a little bit of safflower, creamy white. When I say creamy, I'll show you why, if I can get it bright enough. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, that, what I, that stroke I made is quite a bit brighter. Yep, I can, as I stand back, I see it. So I see it really strong right here. So I'm gonna use my fingernail on the neck and we're gonna really push this. Even stronger, there we go. And then cut it back. And if I have to, I'll soften the edge just simply by stroking over it once, once more with a real light touch and you'll soft. If you work too hard to soften an edge, that's where overworking and mud happens. So this is working. What I was just telling you I wanted to do is actually working because I wanted to really pronounce that bird more. So we're near, near the end and I'm coming close to what you could call finish for this kind of study. So I made that too tall, but all I gotta do is take that background. Take that, whatever that background color is. Got my number eight here. And then I wanna pick at it. Okay. Pick up the background color. Somewhere about in here. See, pretty close right there. Up, it up, add a little bit more definition in here. See, now this is where you can use your knife. I probably should have used that earlier. This is probably what I should have done here instead of instead of trying to paint it in.
I could go a little bit brighter if I want to. This is all, this is all kind of judgment calls that you're doing towards the end. You get it done, you step away. I see, I can go brighter. It's a bright blue, so I mix more white into it. And you can see, I can bring that out a little bit more. A little darker and warmer there. And you just keep messing with this. Whatever I am doing, I would probably do for another couple of hours, making decisions. I, I want to keep some of the energy. Like I like some of the energy that's happening down in here, although I do think I could break it up more. I do believe there could be a lot more activity. Now, I may just, I'll put negatives like that in and then look at it. If it doesn't feel right, then I'll go back with what we would call positives, the darks, and get those working. So you're, you're, it's constant judgment call. As I look at the main rock, which is this rock, I can see more definition. There's, a, there's some crevices, which I could begin to pronounce if I really wanted to. Um, I would like to. I just, right now, we're not going to give myself the time. Um, but I want you to be aware that you can do that. Like I just noticed that, right, I can let that come down and in doing it a little bit. So what you're giving that rock just a little more structure. That's, that's all we're doing is just pronouncing the structure in it just, just a little bit more. We're just about done. Um, I know there's more I could do, um, but again, with these 90 minutes, this is uh, because we have something that required more accuracy, meaning the bird. Uh, generally, you have to be a little slower and things like that. Where in a pure landscape, you can be a little bolder and cut loose and try things, but when you have, as soon as you get into doing something such as uh, this bird, you have to be, you have to be more truer, more accurate. Uh, propor there's proportion involved. There are other elements to deal with. So it's not just a matter of um, getting some nice strokes down. In other words, you, you can't reinvent where things go, where you can with a tree, and you can with any sort of foliage but you can't with something like this. You have to be true to basically um, the way the animal is. So animals take a little bit longer. Certain animals take longer than others. Uh, animals with patterns, zebras, uh, you know, tigers. I've done, I actually have painted a few tigers uh, and they're actually quite fun, but you have to get all that structure in before you worry about the stripes and, and there's a little bit of a similarity to that here. You have to get enough of the accuracy of the bird in there before you can really um, develop a lot of the other areas. I can see I can push my blues up there a little bit more. Don't like this part of the tail. I don't think I've, I've done a good job of it. I'll try and tell you when I do things that I think work and things that I think could be better. But that's about all I can get done in in the amount of time that we're dealing with. And um, still don't like that. This whole area bothers me. I scuff it up. And with rocks, I, I often use that terminology, scuff it up a little bit. Um, in other words, don't make it too neat, flat and clean. A little crevice back in the rock around that rock, a little bit of a crevice, darks, darks behind this rock. Down, just popping things back and forth. Same with this rock, it's a little, this is a little simplified, 
but it's okay. I mean, it's it's fine. Um, I would I would definitely want to take it a little bit further without making it uh, super refined. So that's about it. I think we're going to call it because it's about um, five minutes over at least. So um, hopefully you guys got enough information, even though uh, the painting isn't anywhere near as complete as I would normally have loved it to be. It's still, it's you got to think of these things as their impressions, like an impressionist. Uh, I'm going to step back for the very first time and see how it feels. Uh, it feels okay. I can see some drawing problems. I don't think I have his back up high enough. Um, Anna's going to bring it in closer as I do a little bit of adjustment. So right in here, I'm going to bring that back up just a little bit higher. And I'm using that kind of beautiful white creamy color and really to pronounce some of this stuff a little bit more. A little bit more in here too, right? There. Anyway, guys, that's about the best I can do in this amount of time. Um, I'm going to step back. I'm stepping way back. <laughs> I think I'm going to go in the other room. Um, <laughs> now I see some problems. I still don't like some of the stuff. I think I could scuff this up more. I know I can go darker here, and I think that'll pop him a little bit more. Most of this is working okay. Not thrilled with the way that works. I think that could be chopped up a little bit more, but that's the effect. There's your blue heron. His beak is too short. Son of a gun, you notice that? Oh, yeah. well, you guys should be telling me this stuff, you know? Somebody should, if you say it's wrong, tell me, by God, Okay, well, we'll let you all go. <laughs> you can fix it. I'll fix it. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Thanks, Judy.